everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney the Archer, and today I'm going to show you how you can create this really gorgeous scene of a couple walking together in the rain under really vibrant cherry trees. Now, these lessons are a lot of fun because I'm going to be going through this real time and live. And because of that, on the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He's going to make sure that you see everything that you need to see by switching through our robotic cameras, zooming in, also taking questions from the live chat. That's great for people who are here right now, and it's great for people who are here later. If you're here on the replay, hi, too. <laughs> because probably a question somebody's going to ask is a question you might have at home. Every part of this process is going to be broken down. And the goal of this is not that, I mean, it's awesome to watch me do a painting. I get it. But it's even better in my mind and in my heart that you guys do the painting. So that's what this whole show is about, is getting you guys to be the artists and hopefully get to follow along. Now, to that end, if you check the description below, there's the first three lines that you can easily see, but you've got to open it up where it says more, and it's going to expand that description quite a lot. And below that is going to be a bunch of material information. There's, uh, we don't make you go to the website for the material list, though it is there. There's a bunch of material links that you can go to and get the stuff directly. There are extra things that I think will help you. There are extra links that I think will help you. And most importantly, on the website, if you go to the link that's here, it's going to take you to the page on it's going to be a traceable, a step by step infographic that you can pin on Pinterest because we're pintastic here and extra information and videos to, to kind of really help you depending on where you at in your journey to hoot. I think I've pretty much have I explained what I do. I, I don't know. Man. You know what? This is a bit like Groundhog Day because every time I have a lap, I explain what I do again. <laughs> that, who that are you? Because it might be your first day for those of you who are here for the 500th video. Hi. Mm -hmm. I guess you kind of say it with me now. At this point, it should be like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, right? At this point, you just throw bread at me. All right. So let's turn around and check out the materials. Now, for our class today, I decided to do this piece a little bit bigger. This was initially done on a 9 by 12 but I decided to make it bigger and that way you could see more of what I was doing on an 11 by 14. These are artboards. I grabbed them at Michael's cause it's close, you know, uh, for an economy stretched uh, canvas or an economy board, either is fine. They're kind of six and one half a dozen of another. We like to do wishes. It's a thing we do on our show where we put wishes, intentions, ideas, or thoughts that we'd like to see in the universe. And the most requested wish that I have been getting lately is just so much love and outpouring for everyone in Australia, for the animals in Australia, for the people in Australia, for the, for the first responders in Australia. So the wishes generally come down to everybody's wishing safety so that if you're in the path of a fire, that you're safe and you're not harmed by it. Support for anyone who's been through it and, and needs support. Healing for those who need healing. And we'd like to see the fires be put out. And then for everyone who's been impacted in a, in a region, that there's hope and help and aid coming to you. So that's been sort of an outpouring online that I've been receiving where people have been asking that. Over here, I have the colors I feel like I'm going to be using today. I've got Cad Red Medium, Titanium White, Quinacridone Magenta, Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Cad Yellow. This little sucker here, Luminous Opera. So many questions you have. I can feel the force. Hmm. All right. So what this is, is this is a neon pink. Now, this particular neon pink is one of my favorites. And this company makes my favorite neon. February, I'm going to be doing a bunch of neon paintings. So this is a company to get familiar with because it's the most light fast. I also have carbon black. Before you ask, can I use another neon pink? Yeah, you can use any colors you want. It's fine. Your painting won't explode. It'll be okay. It'll just be a slightly different pink than mine and still spectacularly awesome. So not a problem in any way, I would think. <laughs> you can see I use different brands of paint here. I have different colors. Things are really, it's much more important to get the value. That's how light or dark something is than say maybe the exact color a thing is. Now I'm going to put out my phthalo blue. Uh, those of you that paint with me a lot know what's coming. <laughs> here we go, some phthalo green. <laughs> What color could I be intending on mixing? Those of you who are in the know, you can share the information. I'm also going to put out a little titanium white. I'm going to be a good girl and squeeze from the back for once. I like to squeeze from the middle of my tubes, and it's a terrible habit to be in. 
And then I'm going to put out, I think, a little of my quinacridone magenta already and my black over here, just in case I need to darken a tree trunk or kind of deepen that value. And so if I have those colors there, those are my favorite to do. Now, those of you who guessed correctly, ding, 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 ding. But if you've never seen this, when you want to make phthalo turquoise, you just take one part phthalo blue and one part phthalo green, mix them together, and you have phthalo turquoise deep. Add a bunch of white to it, we have phthalo turquoise white. It's amazing. <laughs> it just goes like that, on and on and on. So that's our color, and when we need more, we'll make more. The next thing that I'm going to do to make my life just a smidgey smidge easier, mm -hmm. I'm going to use this micro mister. Now, with these boards, be careful when you're using water to uh, improve the flow or blendability of your paint because they can overabsorb it. They're not like an ampersand board. They're not resilient to that type of technique. So you have to be light and careful with it. So I'm going to very lightly and carefully mist it. That's just enough to get things going. And I'm going to take a mildly damp, big, giant, chunky brush. This is a number 30. And go ahead and blend my watercolor wishes into the world. And I certainly hope we're going to see some feedback soon that that went well. <laughs> now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm going to pull in some white and grab a little bit of my turquoise. And we're just going to go back and forth. We want a very light color, and it's good that it's streaky like this, especially down where the couple will be walking. And the reason that it's good is that will help actually give the illusion of things being wet underneath our stroll, our people who are strolling, our strollers. It feels wrong. <laughs> Your strollers? I feel, strolling? Yeah, I want to say strollers, but that feels wrong. <laughs> they could be tootling or ambling. Tootlers? I feel better about tootlers in a strange way. They, they might even mean, you know, ambling. Amblers? I, I think they're more tootlers than amblers. Amblers feel so very unfocused. Mm. Oh, I so, tend to amble <laughs> and wonder. <laughs> I, you I wonder meander. Why. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> You're a meanderer. Even in the house, you meander. Nobody knows where you are. I, I don't know where I am. <laughs> so you can see that all I'm doing is just covering this whole canvas with this very light color. I'm taking this brush back and forth. See this? And that wide, strong stroke is not only helping me cover the canvas easily with paint, but it's giving me those slight little streaks. Right? And those are nice. I might even come and put a little white on my brush and even down here just preemptively come across and improve that streaking down here. Get a little of the, the darker blue and then it just will make things easier later. It doesn't have to be a lot. And you can see just a little goes a long way. These are subtle things, but they're effective things. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that brush out. Always, always rinse your brushes out between painting uses. You can dry them off in a towel and lay them flat. You don't want them to sit with water on them. That's, mm. They don't like it, so don't do it. I'm going to grab this little brush here. Now, this is a number eight cat's tongue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some just turquoise here and a bit of my white, and I'm going to make my little zones of landscape. I'm kind of sketchier. So if I think that I've got a little bit of land here, I'm coming from the left-hand side just below the halfway point. And I come in and say, oh, there's a land mass here. Let's bring that back and then perhaps a little bit forward. I'm, what I'm doing is blocking in. Now you can use the traceable and I have a video on the webpage on how to use the traceable and it is not cheating. This is just for you if you're ready to do this type of work. I'm going to get a little more of this. Might come back just a bit above that line, see just a little above it, and uh, talk about a bit of a hill that could be happening here. I might even paint that one in. Yeah, a bit. That looks good. We're zoning out, aren't we? So we've got a little hill over here coming from the right. If the halfway point is here, you can kind of see where these are in relationship. I make this appear uh, higher by simply raising the slope line a bit and the end line a bit. And then let's kind of paint this in so it has a 
has that nice value that the pink will be going under. It's not super critical and you don't have to be neat or precious about it, but it can be nice to give that underlayment. And not underlayment, underlayment. You're switching so quietly today, John. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching you. <laughs> watching me? Yeah, yeah, just, you know. You know, man, you as a husband have been sucked into watching your wife more than any other dude. Nah. <laughs> Except maybe Jay-Z. I'm not comparing myself to Beyonce, Internet. Don't go crazy. I'm just saying some guys got to watch their wives is all I'm saying. You know, you know, there's a lot of husbands that are involved in their wives' jobs and vice versa. Actually, to all the partners that support their partners, kudos to you. I think that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to, while I'm here. While you're there. While I'm here, I'm going to get a little more of the blue into this brush. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about maybe some little trunks. So I'll come to the end here. I'm on the edge or toe of the brush. You could use like a number four round or, you know, a different brush that you felt more comfortable with. What you want to be able to get is a nice little line for the trunks. And I do like to... Make little branches and little things that could be happening off. There we go. That's a little bit of a trunk, isn't it? Mm hmm Maybe these could be going a little bit towards the right. And that one could be a little more straight than its friend. I kind of go crazy a little bit every time I do this. It, get, it gets new and explored. I always more. find new trees that I mentally plant every time I plant a little grove. I, uh... I think that I paint kind of emotionally, and every time I paint, I feel a little different, so that definitely impacts maybe what I've got going on. I'm going to make some thin little trunks here. Those look good. They seem plausible. I'm making another little stronger one there, and it can have a little friend coming up. There we go. You never know. Ah. So that's Fast. pretty good. Oop. I'm losing my little earphone here. Um, yeah, my little sound, my okay. little sound bud. If you need me to stunt handsy, let me know. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get a little of this quinacridone into my paint here, just a smidge. Smidge it. And a couple of these, I'm going to add this sort of hue blue to. It's kind of, it's like saying they're a slightly darker trunk. See how we're doing? Mm-hmm. Just a nice little way to strengthen those up. For the next part, there's a couple of ways to do it, and I'm going to show you some of them. You can take a brush that you have and mix a very light but darker, one shade darker than the background color, and start to plant in maybe some in the misty trees. This is the trick on how you put some trees in the mist. I'm going to use my brush on its edge. I'm going to make little circular motions. And that's one way that I can get this distant set of trees back there. But what you want is a slightly darker color. The other way you can do it is get a little bit of turquoise and a sea sponge. And you can come here and just tap up and down. A lot of people really like this method because the texture is so reminiscent mm. of trees. It's true, it is. So it just gives us that nice little tree shape. Gives a tree vibe. Tree vibes. All right, so there's that. And the trick is just to have it again be about one shade. Darker than the background, that's the mistiness. Now I'm going to come here and I'll demo the other one back here. I'm just rinsing out a bit just in case I want to use it again. Put it to the side. The other tool that I like to use, if you have this brush, the number one ultimate varnish brush, you know I love it for everything. Get it wet. Take the moisture out of it. And you can get a little bit of your turquoise in it. And we can tap that in. As you can see, it needs to be lighter than that. It's too dark. 
water. There we go. I like to break it open and just make sure that this is a very distant little embankment that we will barely be able to see through the bushes, but it's nice. It's almost right at the halfway point. It's about this far above the little bush there. And then how I blend it is once I have it all in, I just wipe all the moisture out of this and just blend it. Now you could use any one of these methods, guess what, mm. throughout. <laughs> so there's not a right one. There is what you have in your toolbox today. If you're very, very new to painting, I would say the sponge method is probably the easiest. If you're regularly painting, you could do the brush method and you could definitely do the varnish brush, brush method. Mm. Now, this is a reflection, right? So what I'm going to want to do is reach way down into my jar very deeply. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped my sponge and it sank. Don't. Don't. And I'm going to make a mirror of color here. So I'm going to take my turquoise and get some white into it because I, I do want it to be dark enough to see. And here's what. It's basically, and sometimes it's easier to do it on the side. I want to bring this in. So I've got to make sure that what I'm seeing feels like perhaps the mirror reflection of what's above it. So I'm going to take that. And then I'll go ahead and give myself some little implied trunks. So if that curves like that, this one would curve a little more like that. You kind of just mirror the little shapes that you're seeing, right? So if this bows this way, it bows the opposite down low. And then once those are all in, here's the trick. Any brush. Yeah. I'm going to use this one. While the paint is still wet, I pull it across and blend oh, the yeah. effect, making it feel a little bit wet and kind of distant and far away. Now I'm also going to get a little of the pink onto here and some of the white and blue. Let's make some of these little leaves be a bit pinky purple. This will be nice in trying to say that in this park we have a type of tree. These are a little far off in the in the fog, so we are not maybe seeing the full saturation of their color. And I'm going to also make a point of ensuring some of that color is here, and I'll blend it over. See, I tap it in and blend it over. Yeah. Now. A thing happened. This went sort of at an angle like this, but reflections don't bend and bow like that. So I'm going to come back and blend that some. There's just little hints of that. That went pretty well. Yeah. All right. So this is essentially. Uh, through step one on to step two, I'm going to sit my coffee, ask if there's any questions uh, while we're letting the paint get a little bit tacky. I don't want to be tacky mm. but while we're getting the paint a little bit tacky and see how we're doing today. There was some interesting questions. Patty was asking, different Patty, Patty C, have you ever painted a Mississippi pine tree? I don't even know that I could identify a Mississippi pine tree versus a Texas pine tree. You know, there's the ship working. Do I know the tree? No, I do. I'm just trying to think if I intentionally done it or has it been sort of a side effect of <laughs> how I'm holding my fan brush. Mm, I and don't what know. I would say is that more specifically, I haven't like studied a Mississippi pine tree and then reproduced it, but I would say that I have done pine trees that have more of that bow to their branches and more of that structure and shape, right? I've probably done a Tory pine mm -hmm. as well. And a few northern uh, California pines. It, they, they have, if you look at pine trees, if you look at, uh, if you just get on a gardening thing and look at, just like, what types of pines are there? It's really fun as an artist because you're going to see that 
Sometimes the branches are spaced out with huge gaps. Sometimes they're structural like a, like a bonsai tree. Sometimes it's fluffy. It's like somebody fluffed the tree. Yep. And then, um, you know, sometimes they kind of do the Bob Ross thing, right? Very, very neat and tidy, being all very Bob Rossy. And it, it really seems to depend on regions and climates on how it affects it. So, yes, but not specifically that tree. I would say more have intentionally done a Tory pine and certain other pine trees that are more like, this must be painted. Mm. Yeah. Does that, I hope that answers the I question. I think that does. I think it does. No, there was another there was a mm. technical question. I love me some technical questions. This one's, Vicky was saying, does, do you know, can you put resin over a varnished painting? Okay, on that specific one, you're going to have to call the company that made the varnish and ask because everybody's varnish is a little bit different and this becomes serious chemistry. Gotcha. I'm sure there are varnishes that you can because they're um, not a solivar. I don't know if on the removable varnishes you could put a resin over that. So just look at the bottle of the varnish that you used and look at the resin that you're intending to use. And these companies always have helplines. Call them, write them, and wait for the answer because that's the number one thing you can do to prevent your painting from being permanently damaged. It's just ask the people who manufacture the products because they will have, they will have dealt with it. Mm -hmm. Like, in a way that nobody else will have dealt with it. And they're super invested in you not having a terrible experience. So they're going to want to help you. It's a motivating thing for them. All right. Back into the, the fray, shall we? Absolutely. Fray it up. <laughs> fray. Put a little of my white out there again, because I certainly kind of chunked through it very quickly. I might add my cad red at this stage. I'm going to use some golden cad red today because of the big tube. You got to power through it. Power through it. I'm also, uh, da, 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 I think that's good. I'm not going to put any luminous out uh, yet. I'll stay in this little brush. It's been happy for me. You could use a number four round or a bright, just whatever gives you good trunk. And we're going to start to put in our basis. So our basis will be a little bit of our turquoise into our magenta and some white. Right, because it's it's farther away, so it's got to be, it's got to be a little misty. Come along here, and it can be nice to sort of be a little rough, not too even with this distant line, because there's little deadfall. Mm. And so, even though it wouldn't be distinct, there would still be a sense of shape for it. You do want it to be light, like you know other distant things in your painting. So add enough white, and desaturating. If your color is too bright, you can always put a smidge. Oh, be careful of black in it to deaden it and get it to distance itself in its illusionary way into mm -hmm. the surface. You can see I'm just adding a little bit of white, making sure this is a slightly lighter little space. And then coming forward, I'm going to get more into my magenta. I might even get some of my Kind of cad red into it coming forward for the basis of my little side planting over here. And what you're going to see me doing, I may, I may turn it like this, yeah. the opposite direction of how I have it, just so I have an easy angle to get into it. And I'm going to pull the brush back. I want to make rough. Little edges that imply, oh gosh, just the dirt bank sort of breaking down as they do. Because they do. Yeah. And uh, get right in there and have that going on. So it's okay if I pick up a little purple. I don't mind. Just trying to make a deep color with which to build everything else up with. As you do. Mm-hmm. I'm in some fun now. Oh. Sorry. No, every once in a while, I look over at the screen, the, mon you know, the, the, the YouTube mm -hmm. screen, 
and I'll start looking at it like it's the screen that I'm supposed to switch. Oh, no. <laughs> and then it won't respond the way that I think it's supposed it's to. It's not going, man. And then I'm I have a smidge that black into this. Smidge, smidge. That's a smidge. It's so little that it's it's just impossible to even see. You know, because every once in a while I just get caught up watching you paint. And, you know, I'm switching out of second nature in some cases. You know, and so then I'm... I look over at the other screen, and I'm just watching you. <laughs> As you do. And then you don't move, and I'm like, why isn't it switching? Oh, wrong. I'm doing Sorry. similar little trunk styles over here, same brush. I'm making them light so they are far away, distant from us. It's fun to do. I like them. You're you're still on that cat's tongue, yeah? I'm still just doing the cat's tongue because I just, well, I got lazy and I'm not switching brushes. And that happens. That's what's nice about this brush. You can use whatever you've got. You keep using it. You don't have to stress on it nearly as much. And it'll give me the nice point and the nice trunk and some different stuff. So. Nice to put some trees back there. Now, if I have trees back here, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely want to talk a bit about some trees here. And I can use my my brush. Is that the ultimate varnish? That's the ultimate varnish brush to sort of blend that in and cause that to kind of streak out. Maybe the ultimate blending brush now. And I'll get thicker there with the paint because I want to. I want to. I want really want to see it. Could be the ultimate blending brush. Which makes makes that water look really it makes it look easy to do. Is what it it is easy to do with that brush. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't just make it look that way, it is easier. But you can still do it. There's lots of tools that'll do it. Don't don't ever feel like, oh, I don't have that. I I'll never be able to do this thing. Because you'll be able to do the thing. You'll be okay. Yeah. Now I'm also going to I think I know I've got a couple trunks coming up, and I'll hit it in a second. Um, once I see where they are, I do need to put some little pink going in the background. So, you know, sponge, uh, this guy, just something that's going to let you get some little distant leaves, right? So I'm going to take these two and mix them together. And then a little bit of the white, because these are far away trees, right? Hmm. And I'll just really not. You can do it leaf by leaf with a brush. You can do it with a sponge. You can come here. I'll demo it again. If you leave anything, I just want you to feel like, oh, I can do this a bunch of different ways. You could be like this with this brush, making little texture shapes. See how that's done? Yeah. So it's not really the tool. It's about understanding that what the shape should be as you are using it. So if the shape should be kind of broken up, then this brush is great if you understand how trees tend to break themselves up. So I've kind of got this little light distance here. I know that there'll be some dark foliage going up. I just want to make sure our distant foliage, which is lightest, has a nice, interesting little tree shape. What's fun with this is I can kind of bend it out at it gives me these little delicate leaves. They remind me of Japanese maples a titch and their little sensibility. Take that up here. I can always come back with blue and put it back in for the sky. I'm going to oh. just give myself some foliage. You see foliage? I see foliage. Mm hmm. I can even get into some of that sort of darker pink that was on the trunks. Sorry, I get playful sometimes. I'm like, oh, this would be nice. A lot of times when I'm designing, I have to kind of hustle through, but when I'm painting with you guys, I get to chill out. And I do like my chill out time. Yeah. Don't you? I do. You do. I think while I'm here, I want to get some of this into my brush and kind of, Maybe 
rough up that landscape a bit. See what I'm doing? Mm hmm. Making it feel a little more like Deadfall. Deadfall! Yep. Who has Deadfall? <laughs> this garden path has Deadfall. But that's not Deadpool. I was going to say, you know who's a fan of Deadfall? <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> Ooh. And Bob Ross. Hmm. Yes, he is. That's true. That's how he stays calm. But you know what's funny? What's funny? Is Deadpool is a fan of Dodd R- Bob Ross. So Bob Ross. I think Ross, it's natural. Don't you generally feel like if you were Deadpool, you would need a way to de-stress? So Bob His Ross. life is so upsetting. Just, who, who can't love that dude? He's just, you know. That's a very upsetting life that he has there. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that I could live uh, yeah. the way that, that Deadpool has to do that. It's a rough thing. It would be it would be stressful. I feel. Yeah, I, I feel I got a super mellow, stressful. I got a super mellow job. I'm gonna put out my luminous pink, my luminous opera. I like opera pink just in general. It's a fantastic pink. Um, but you could use any neon pink that you get. Someone was like, "Hey, you know, I got some fluid neon pink." Some other people are like, "I got some artist loft neon pink." It's all fine. Mm-hmm. You just want that neon neonacity. That's not really a technical term, but I'm using it anyways. <laughs> so I'm going to take my black, but I'm going to kind of tone it with this magenta so that these trees that I'm about to do here have this really sort of in them. Mm. And I've got some stuff that's, it's got to head over this way, right? I've got a tree that's got to start right about, let's plant it here today. And it's going to come up. And I will be planting some leaves over it, but for the purposes of now, I will take the trunk all the way through. There we go. So you can kind of see it comes up. It's a little thicker down here and it's tapering out up there to the top. Bringing that up. Helping my trunk feel established. Does your trunk feel established? I don't know. <laughs> my okay. trunk. My trunk is well established. Hopefully. <laughs> there we go. That's a nice bunch of branches that I can give my couple to walk under. Sometimes the tree branches end up really high. Sometimes they end up really low. It's a very strange journey for me. Mm-hmm. Branches well, tend to wander around. They do. They just go where they want to go. It's very, very, very. Be mindful of how you planted your trees, even as you're following my lesson, right? Every time that you do this, there'll be micro differences between it. And you want to make sure that you're adjusting for what's on your canvas, not just what's on my canvas. Mm. You know, so think, is this, you know, is this making a nice shape? Is it leaving the right kind of room that I want? Yeah, I did that. I'm going to do some strokes over here. That helps. I'll let you know where I'm going. Baby. <laughs> Did you see me? You're like, oh, no. No, I have just, uh, I'm a little jumpy today. Jump, I'll jump. Probably put some of that back in. I'm just talking to myself about where I think some trees are going to go. As you do. Definitely need one back here. There we go. See, that magenta and the black. I can always come into this white and get it into that and sort of work it up the trunk if I need to to sort of pull it into the space. I'm going to pull these into their little space. I will have little leaves over them. I'm just trying to talk about the little zone that they're in. Mm-hmm. They get into a little zone, and I don't want to not acknowledge their zone. Let's get some blue into that, because I think that will be very pretty. And put that up the trunk. Put up that, that up your trunk and leave it. <laughs> Feels very insulting, doesn't it? <laughs> put I guess that if up you were your an, trunk and leave it. If you were an elephant, I would be very offended. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'd be like, I'd be giving you the tusk right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
So I'm going to put those three in right now. And I'm going to get back into my little brush brush here. Brush I'm going to come the other side with the cad red and the magenta. And I think I will Ooh. a little more white into that. It needs to be pink. I mean, they're cherry trees. In, yes. Need more cherry flavor on we those do. cherry trees. We do. A little more magenta. Too much uh, cad. Want to keep them into that pink range. Uh, maybe bring some leaves over that way. A little more magenta, a little more white. There we go. Fun stuff. That tree has, it's just full, filled in itself. Got to fill in. Filled in. It's got work to do. Needs to answer. It does. Itself. I didn't know it had, had to answer. Has to answer for has itself. to answer for itself. Yeah, I think so. Let's come down here and I'll. I really am enjoying how that does that little wispy leaf bit. I'll probably get into it with a square in a second. And I'll be putting some of these trunks back. I just want that basis of leaves there. So where needed, you know, you're going to want to come in and get some trunks. I still want some more leaves, though. I don't want to leave it like that. Oh, that was just some magenta and some white. Isn't that a nice layer? Mm -hmm. There we go. Get some depth. In the dark, dark woods. Some cool stuff happened. Good deal. Let's get back into our little trees now that we've got this sort of worked out and we can talk about it some more. Mm. I think it's fun to have some of the branches showing strongly and some of them peeking out from between leaves. Yeah, it implies the density of the canopy. Yeah, I feel like it does some nice stuff. It does. That's the nice way of putting it. The density of the canopy <laughs> is implied by these things. I have these words. I like to use them. It has words. Density of the dark trees behind here. It's true. Using your atmospheric perspective. I'm doing something. Isn't that, isn't that what it is? Uh, it, it's, these are elements, the lightening and deepening of color and the saturation of color for the purposes of bringing it forward or pushing it back certainly qualifies. See, I paid attention. Some. I'm not just a pretty set of hands over here. I feel like you might be just a pretty set of hands. I'm going to be real honest. Let's tap out some little... Individual leaves here, if I like it. Now, you can come in, take a little bit of your gray color, but I like to get some yellow into it. I'm going to make a little highlight. I'm going to come and highlight some of these. You're still using that cat tongue? I'm still using the cat's tongue. I can switch it if everybody needs me to. No, just curious. We'll okay. make sure we're still not missing something here. You didn't no. sneak a brush on no, us. No, it's still the same one. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll switch over. Are you still using that same brush? I am still misses? using that same brush. I get all the yellow out there because I'm being playful. Oh. Being playful. <laughs> You're kind of stepping back there. I'm I'm trying to let everyone see how far you're stepping. Oh you're no no back. no, that's for you, babe. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> just trying to paint from the from like. I mean, I like getting... to paint from the back of the brush when possible, you know, and that does help you. I 
tend to on the show sometimes mm. get like really wrapped up on my brush. And I'm just trying to push that back. And then if I want to kind of push that branch down, I just come and get into the pink that I had. And I'm just pushing that branch down. I don't have to stress on that or be worried about that or any of that. Just more magenta. Oh! Oh! Did a paint fart on me. It did a little <laughs> boop boop. It really did. I'm going to pull out some Cad Red. And interestingly enough, I'm going to work it into my Luminous Opera. I'll start putting some of these pops of color in where Ooh, I... Oh, that really pinks it up. Just is going to be very saturated. You can get some white into it. It really does some interesting stuff. I think I'm going to definitely bring a little one of the leaves through here. So what you're seeing me doing is tapping a little shape, right, of little leaves that I could bring through there. And just thinking about where maybe some of my colors might go. Right, like if I want to have a little of my luminous pink and quinacridone magenta, which is a fabulous color, just on a super good day. The mixes here are to the eye. I don't know how much the camera can pick up, but to the eye are beyond compare. Oh, yeah. No, we're definitely picking up the color differences and. That these, I really love how how bright the colors are. A little white, and I'm just oh, some of you, and where if you ever like oh, I feel like that was too strong, or I need to knock that back, then you can do that. You just build up these layers as you tell your story. Now, on the ground here, what do we have? Deadfall. Mm. <laughs> so we got to put some deadfall on the ground. I'm going to take some magenta and some anacrodon, and I'm going to make these little kind of loosey-goosey brush strokes. And the loosey-goosey brush strokes will imply some leaves. So they're just sort of like a tap and a pull, and they're curved, and start there, and you can... You come over here and get a little bit and say, oh. I'm going to say thank you to Patty, who's over supporting us in our super Patty. chat. Thank you very much, Patty. Thank you so much, Patty. And another Patty would like to know, what are you using for your palette over there? This is the Strathmore Paper Peel Palette. Um, I often use the Gray Matters, which is linked in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, I like these. They are my preference. They're... Really, it's up to you. I don't enjoy cleaning palettes, mm. right? Uh, but if you're going to use a temp uh, glass palette, please use a tempered glass one. Mm. I really have to say cardboard on the back and duct tape around the sides will not protect you from glass from a frame spontaneously shattering. No. And it's a thing that happens. Not it all does. the time. And but frequently enough that somebody will put in a hack video, guess what you can do and save money and they'll tape around the edges and they'll do that. And then not enough people have anything happen and somebody ends up, you know, getting their hands slashed open. I'm just, I mean, like, total, totally statistically speaking, I mean, like, if it only happened one in a thousand times. It's too many times. But how many thousand people watch a video? Right. And so what I would say is if you're going to do a glass palette, make sure it's tempered. So if it does break on you during the washing, during cleaning, during any part of the process, it's not doing that crazy explosion shattery thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know. It's, it's just, I mean, like. I know that's a bit of a bandwagon, but just trust me, it's not fun to see somebody yeah, get hurt. Yeah. Ask... I'm going to get a little of my blue into here and some of my, maybe a little more of my phthalo blue and some white and put a little shadow under here. Ask anyone who does stained glass how fun that is. Have fun. Yeah, stained glass people will tell you, don't mess with glass. They'll be like, no. See, don't do that. It's very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
why would that even be a thing that's happening? Because, you know, there, I guess there's a lot of pressure to put out information and sometimes, you know, that supersedes doing research or making sure advice is not dangerous. Because if it's on the if it's on if it's on the internet, it's true. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I'm just making sure these little branches are making me happy in the way that I want them to. You got to make your branches make you happy in the way you want them to. They should behave for you. You know, it's always also correct. Mm. Autocorrect mm. is also always okay. Oh, my gosh. Autocorrect has created more embarrassing situations for me, more embarrassing than my bad spelling has ever done. <laughs> so many more problems in my life than even bad spelling has brought to me. Mm. Now, I'm going to start bringing in some foreground here. Are you? And so that this is more of my focal tree. This is my, my more, ooh, I'm Phase four tree. I'll still put some magenta in it, even though it's going to appear black. That minor tonal display will make the big difference. I'm going to come into this zone, not all the way to the bottom, but right here in the mid zone. Let's plant a seed. There it is. Mm. And let's grow a big tree trunk up. This is your strongest, oldest tree in the walk. So it's the trunk is the thickest. It's also the closest to you, the viewer. You can see I'm just trying to make nice, strong, thoughtful little brush strokes here. Yeah. And that's a nice little top of a tree. So things are happening. Tree topping. Yeah. Top that tree. Bring a little branch out there off to the side. I like to make these little stops and starts to my little tree branches. They feel branchy. Hmm. Sort of like, you know, tree being cheeky. True. Cheeky you don't tree. want you don't want just a big you don't want lumber. You don't want like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm gonna it's, put some yellow in my brush and some white for some highlight. It's gotta have some branches, otherwise it's just a stick. Or, you know. I'm gonna just brush this very loosely on the side. See how we're doing right here on the side? We're just stroking this in there as loosely. It's giving us a little highlight. Put one up here, maybe perhaps. I can even get some on the inside there, just so that what color that we have right is throughout the piece. You want to make sure that whatever you do. There's sort of a unifying narrative. I'm just making this tree look very, tr very barky. This tree is barking orders at everybody else. Have you noticed? I do. I see them. Now, I don't really want to put new leaves there till all that black is dry because the black will come up and kind of dull the color and I won't really love it. Okay. So I'm going to dry this real quick. All right. I'm not. Ooh, no denied the dry. All right, so you're going to turn around and tell them about why it's important to dry, and I'll fix it. So when you're painting in acrylic especially, you are always balancing your creative process between leaving, <sighs> leaving layers wet and letting those blend into each other because wet layers blend into each other or layering layers, and they only layer if what's underneath is dry. A lot of times we like to mix colors on the canvas where the paint is wet and a new color is, in, is introduced and they mix together in a beautiful and painterly way on the canvas. But sometimes you just don't want black right here. So you got to dry it. So this is a live show in case you guys didn't know that. So that was totally unrehearsed. As I'm sure you can see, that was very professional and well executed. And this is, again, live with the art Sherpa on YouTube. So thank you guys. Seriously. Uh, make, appreciate you guys joining us. What? I was just saying, this is totally unrehearsed. That was what? everything. This oh, is, no, we don't rehearse. We're you, this good You live. can tell. I know they know that. No. We're, I mean, like, we, no way. You, there's no, they're not sitting at home going, 
gosh, they rehearse so much. <laughs> I was like, going to say. It's a mad miracle this show <laughs> happens at all. <laughs> but for uh, my stubborn determination and John's stubborn determination probably would not be going on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a little of my turquoise. Well, and also the fact that they're here to support us. That is a key ingredient. We, we got a big crew of people who love watching what we do, and you guys make it possible, so thank you. Yeah. But outside of that, it's sticking to it. <laughs> so I'm adding a little bit of my uh, back, this little background color that I had to do a couple of things. Hmm. I'm pulling some of this color back into the little deadfall area, and I'll bring leaves back into it, but I want to be able to do that wet blend. So to be able to do that, I've got to be able to get that trunk color kind of engaged. And if that comes like this, then that's going to be. Oh, you got to kind of mix it into the shoreline. Yeah. Got to maybe be talking about some reflections that could be happening there. So once those are messily in, but the paint underneath is wet. Very light pressure. I can erase the whole thing. Mm. There it goes. What a what a wet day reflection, isn't it? It is. And if you need more white, guess what? Just get some. Just drag it through when necessary. All good. Put some over here while I'm at it. Just feeling some white. Of course, I want to say thank you to I'm gonna go like that. all of our community who's hanging out here with us today. Really want to say thank you to Patty, who's a lovely supporter of ours in, in, uh, in Super Chat and always supporting our heat shifty talk when it comes to... Patty make, loves that color shift talk. <laughs> gotta, gotta make sure we uh, <laughs> protect your paint against unnecessary heat. We do, man. I'm just making sure that this background hill is all... In the background. It is. It's very in the background. Keep it in the background. Keep it in the background. So now we have a whole bunch going on here, and yeah. we can start finishing out the trees. And the trees are a fun little mix of colors. Uh, you know, of course, we've got our quinacridone and our magenta. You can put a smidge of yellow into that and grab white, and you get an amazing color. It's trees very you... cherry tree centric. Oh, up there. We're going to start to tap in some little leaf shapes, right? Yeah. Hiding some of these little branches. Maybe talking about a, a wonderful fall of branches that's coming forward. So I'm just getting some white and my magenta. Bringing those forward. Just to start to begin to speak about it. Leave room for your couple to walk. I like almost lost it the first time. I was like, I'm so excited <laughs> about the tree. I was like, there's almost no room for these people to take a stroll. Tree, 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 tree. You just got an over tree. Out. Your and inner Groot came out. And then we're going to pull, pull those out. So I'm just talking about some shapes. magenta and a little bit of the neon pink that you have so much fun now lorraine and that. many others have been commenting how beautiful the colors are in this i'm enjoying this too and now that there's a better uh neon paint out there i'm kind of excited about doing some of these more luminous lessons uh also since i have you guys using the luminous color a couple couple of places i'll make sure that there's more lessons so you can use up your paint yeah so when i do introduce a new color i do try to make sure that i build on that lessons um there's a set of luminous colors by holbein i wholly recommend and i really like golden's blue and that should get you through anything you need um but i've seen all kinds of sets in in like michael's and different places so don't feel like you can't Gonna bring this little run of leaves down this way. Mm -hmm.
Now here at the end of this one, I'm going to add a little white to my pink so that these leaves are more delicately placed out. Get my tree's grown a bit. <laughs> Every time I paint it, man. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Every time. Trees grow. The trees grow. It's okay. It is okay. I accept the trees need to grow. They do. They need to expand their they branches. Do. They need to they need to expand. They need to have their little moments. I'm gonna bring some little values here. Oh, that's a nice little value there, right here in that corner. That white and luminous pink. Ooh. Maybe let's bring a little round of leaves across here. This so we're just layering these little power moves, right? Oh, that's fun when you just get into the neon pink, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because they, they just pop. And I love that final little run of little tiny leaves coming. Yeah. Make me super happy. They make me space out and watch you paint. Yeah. They're fun colors to use. And yes, they work. They're reactive to black light. So these parts of the tree that have this, that would all oh, be glowing in black light. That's actually kind of cool. Hmm. Pulling that forward. and I'm just making sure that these bright focal leaves have their own kind of spacing, their own kind of layering. I got my white here. Now... If you want to make sure it stays luminous, 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 Lucas Paints makes a luminous white. It's the only one I've seen. Mm. It's quite good. I, we did a bunch of black light painting at one point because <laughs> I was into it. <laughs> and I learned about all the different companies, black light paints and pigments and how they worked and how effective they were and their shelf life and all that. We might do some more of that. We could. Never if we know. feel creative enough. The Sherpa gets a wild midnight whim every once in a while. I'm going to put some of my cad yellow into this and get some white. I'll make kind of this interesting orange color. <laughs> they were like, we can hear John thinking about getting a black light. I've already got a bunch hanging over her head. Yeah, the, it's, it's not even a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's a switch. <laughs> I would, I would flip them now, except it scares her whenever I turn off the lights in the show. No, it doesn't scare me. It's just, it's just a crazy pain to flip them over right now. We, we have to plan flipping them over. We do. It doesn't. The cameras are have to be set up for it. Actually, the cameras do. They have to be. The, oh, these new ones were better, weren't they? The new ones I'm are adding way some more better white into my luminous pink. We mm -hmm. should just, you know, turn them on. See you later. That, that could be a good uh, Facebook test. Experimentation on the Facebook. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> we have some stream testing to do. We could do it with black light paint. <laughs> we could do that. Get the black light paint over here. Yeah. I've done whole landscapes, portraits, all kinds of things in black light. And, and honestly, if you ever need to know anything about photoreactive, luminous, black light paint, and pigments, longevity, who's got good stuff, who has what color, where you can find anything, I has that info. Because I was maybe a titch obsessed with it at one point. And there's a bunch of those videos on our website. Just if you're into it. If you're into it and you feel the need. There's a couple. If you feel the need. And I was yes. going to say for speed, but now I can't because it's going to be for black light. You can see I'm just creating these little highlights. It's a little yellow. It's a little white. Look at these trees. Aren't they delightful? <laughs> oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. So guess what we have to do now? Uh... More I'll, deadfall oh, for yeah. Deadpool. <laughs> More leaves on the ground. All the leaves are brown. All the leaves are brown. Sky is gray. Doo, doo, doo. Just back and forth with a little magenta, isn't it? And then you can get a little magenta in the pink as you come forward.
if you just mix it up. Always move your canvas, not your body. Why is that? Because you want to protect your body posture and not hurt yourself. Ah, keep that artist form so you don't hurt your arm. Yeah. Because there's nothing like going to a sports injury doctor saying, Oh, it's so embarrassing, guys. I have to do it periodically. And it's they're like, what'd you do? I was painting a lot. <laughs> and they just look at you like, what? <laughs> And she has a, she does. She has a sports doctor for her painting arm mm -hmm. and her posture. Stand up straight, Sherpa. Yeah. If you were in a, say like taking, you were in art school. So a couple things that art school gives you that sometimes being self-trained won't give you, right? They're both equally fine, but sometimes there's benefits in each choice, right? Ooh, yeah. You can't say one is necessarily better than the other. It's just one benefits in this very specific way that maybe the other one doesn't. And one of the things that art school gives you is you usually have a professor comes by who will in some way remind you that your posture and how you're engaging the artwork is going to create injury over time. And material science. And material science, especially safety in the studio. Yes. It's very important to have safety in the studio. Uh, uh, that is where sometimes being self-trained leaves people at a mild deficit. Because they just weren't, they don't have a background in the studio safety. I'm going to go ahead and add this blue. Just a little bit of white and blue underneath the tree. Because, you know, shadow. <laughs> I like coming up the back of the tree with that. Cheeky. Because I'm a cheeky bugger. It was fun and now, now it's gotten away from me. All right, so the last little bits of deadfall i actually want to get once my couple's in because i want to be able to layer all through there including them and i kind of want to heat my coffee is that doable um yeah can you can you can tell the world something about yourself that's semi-interesting that will hold their attention while i, I get don't think coffee? i can tell you anything about right. myself that's semi-interesting there's no illusion that i have in that right now so what i'll do is <laughs> and i have no topic to even answer what I'll say is, so like right now in my life, what's been sort of fascinating is if you only see me on the YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, I have an event. Would you like to come paint with me? <laughs> Marketing. We don't do it enough. So uh, I have in March an event where you can come uh, stay with me and paint with me. And I, I, okay, well, let me just stick with the retreat. So... <laughs> It's the Archer Bird Sheet. If you go to the website and you click the events tab, it'll open up more information about it. It's uh, five days, four nights. Food is included. We provide the art materials. Um, we'll come pick you up from the airport. And we just do that week together. Just art, 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 art. It's acrylic and watercolor and pastel right now currently on the plan. And I'm going to introduce people to plein air painting, which is the super fun, fancy way of saying doing art outside. I honestly think it's a good thing to do because it's really useful in your regular life. Because if you travel all, you go on a vacation, you're probably going to want to paint something on vacation. So this would give, you know, a foundation for that. And then we're going to get a bunch of cool footage about people painting outside. So yay for that. That's going to be fun. So that's going to be really fun. It's in Hot Springs, Arkansas. All right. March 18th. So there. I didn't, I didn't have. There we go. <laughs> See, look, you had something to fill the air with. And they were interested too. Really? I feel so dorkasy. Mm. I feel so dorkasy. That's okay. All right. My couple is basically blue, black, and white with a titch of yellow. Mm. I am, so they're kind of a tonal value. There's a traceable. If you're not into drawing and if you're like, man, this is cool and all, but I don't feel like drawing this couple, don't stress on that. You don't have to do it. Um, just use the transfer method and you can put them on. I, however, am going to make some little decisions and kind of draw them in. You know, they're an interesting little group. So hopefully the pink chalk will work really, really well. So make purple. Sketch I need in. to have them end about here in about this space. And the top of their umbrella at the tallest needs to be under the branches. So you, know, you got to plan that. I'm going to carve this down. Oh, it's an umbrella shape, which is basically a very squished triangle that I'm going to arc. That's not too bad. Mm. Do 
giving myself a general guesstimate of the head size, and that helps me plan out the body. A man's idealized body is eight heads. <laughs> mm. Something you may not know. Interesting. Eight heads. So you've got to leave room for the heads and the legs. And you have to imply that the heads and legs. So when you're doing an umbrella painting, if your head is implied this long, you need eight of those coming down. Yeah, that makes it's, sense. It's a guideline. It's not a rule. Obviously, people come in different different heads thing. Now, to do this, I initially start out with just a, uh, the dark black and blue, and I kind of work this out in my dark values and add highlights as I go. Okay. So this is a number four round. It's a nice brush for painting on the canvas with directly. Uh, to do this part, if you're tracing it, you will need to have the image fully traced on to follow along from here. Or you're freehanding it with me. And that's going to be fun because you're going to learn some stuff. Now, my umbrella is super cool. I'm going to maybe arc it just a bit. Yeah, I kind of arc it a bit by pressing that brush down. Yeah. Bows it a, a titch. And then we, we sort of know that there's some segments. I find I do my center segment first. It helps me find my other segments. If I'm just loose sketching. Which I am. So there you go. Kind of a loose, loosey-goosey umbrella. Mm. And I'll just get that on there in the little dark blue. How fun is that? Pull it, pull it. There we go. I get asked a lot why I do this binary all the time. Mm. Here's my candid answer, because I know I'm going to get asked this after. It's not that. I'm like trying to like say it's got to be a binary picture. It's that if I show you a guy's figure and a girl's figure, you can make whatever you need. It gives you the most examples so that you can customize this painting yourself. I highly recommend that you paint things that you would like reflected in your life, right? So change the hair color, change the age, change anything you need to in the painting to make this be perfect for you but that's why I always do it that way this gives you guys the most options of combinations it doesn't really help you with robot that much but short of that you're good <laughs> is that okay you got all mm -hmm. quiet John no not at all okay oh I'm, I'm actually just in chat oh, all right so I'm gonna imply a little head here Kind of peeking out, right? There's his little head. It's peeking a little bit under the umbrella. And I know I'm going to want some space between him and her. Now, his collar comes out a bit past his head. And we got a little shoulder that'll be happening here. He's got her head. Now, I will do hers with hair, is going to blow to the side, but I'm going to give her just a just a little ball right now. This is a stick figure for a minute. If her head's here, I'm only going to want her shoulder to be implied about out here, just a little bit out from her body. So that means his arm's going to come around like this. And in like that. Oh. I have a little sort of shirt tail right here. And I am painting the shirt untucked. Because <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> and an implied arm right here. Where does the elbow go? At the waist. Ah. So as long as you kind of imply the bend of your elbow, like somewhere around where the waist is, you're going to be okay. Now, there's an interesting thing that's happening on the leg. 
He's got a leg that's slightly forward. And bent in step coming back. And I like to just let myself know that that is a thing that's going on. Right, that there's a heel up and engaged. Even if I'm not going to see all of it, I like to tell myself where that's going on. Very loosely. Look, I'm not like, you know, you know, woo. Mm -hmm. And this leg can be slightly forward and more engaged. So they're sort of stepping. Maybe they're cold. I don't know. I do actually know it's my painting. I don't know why I said it. <laughs> you just I'm make it up as you go along. I'm literally the decider. So. You, you, this is just. What? Kind of creating a little waistline here. I might raise her waistline or something from him, just like a higher waistline. And I know I'm going to have that there. Now her legs. Right. She also is kind of mid-step. I'm going to bow a little line right there. Little ball. This is kind of how I figure out where I'm going to <laughs> talk about high heels, right? Mm -hmm. Another forward ball. This little ball sometimes will be higher than that one. And the heel will end at a shorter spot. These are little things that I imply. So this is a crazy wonkety drawing. When you're in the step-by-step, -step, you would be looking at it going, what's she doing here? Now you know why I did it like that. Oh. It's because I'm going to have to put a highlight here and a highlight here, a highlight here. Where I'm going to put the light and shadows is going to give the shape to what's happening on the couple. Mm. Right? And the other thing that I'm going to do, and I might as well get it done now, is I'm going to take a little bit of white. Let's get the blue into it. But we can get a little dark on this. We just want something to blend into. Yeah, you can see how he's leaning on her because he's having a hard time walking on that slippery surface. Is that what it is? I think so. I thought he was trying to... to my thing, he's snuggling her, so, you know. <laughs> I'm just... I'm joking because she's in high heels on the super slick surface. <laughs> so it's like, woohoo. So I'm going to just put some of this dark color right here while I've got it. You know, because we want to talk about the dark shadow. And I've just wet that area underneath. I bet you guys can guess what's next. Get a, use your ultimate blender. Just to start that a little bit. Now I'm going to do something even crazier. What's that? You going to highlight it? Mm -mm. No. What are you doing? I don't know what that is. What? Shadowy. Mm -hmm. Oh, you get you take it on the side. Oh, wow. So, just a little bit. And, and this is just the time to do that now. There's other details. There's other reflections, but it's just nice to get it in now. Hmm. I'll be adding more to it in a minute. I just like to get these things in sooner than later. I like you can it. always. Add a little bit of the side. Yeah. As much as you want. Because they would be casting. They'd be casting doubt. You can go into the blue and the white if you want at this stage too. This is just a hot mess. It helps if there's more white. Mm. I'm just wiggling these little. These little light distortions and effects that are happening behind the couple. So we're giving them weight. We're giving them presence. I'm going to put out more white. Yeah. Because I want to. Because y'all made me. How are we doing today? Really are we, good. Are we doing good? Yeah. People find us okay? We have, a, we have over 500 people over here hanging out, painting with us, chatting in chat. Just And you know what I have to say is it's been a very interesting day. We've had a steadily increasing crew of people here. It's just one of those things I think as the as folks are like, wait, the shirt is on? And they just keep coming like we just yeah. So it's been one of those days where it's been just sort of folks wandering in pretty steadily throughout the show. 
So I'm taking my blue and my black for all the people who were wandering and steadily throughout the show. Mm-hmm. I'm using my number four round, and I am blowing some long hair. This is my choice. You can do short hair. You can do anything you want. And you tell sometimes people write me and they don't believe they can do what they want. Another thing <laughs> on our website, there's a lot of hair videos. There's videos on skin color. There's videos on hair. A lot of that is just so that you know you can make your art your own. We don't even restrict you to species. We have fur covered as well. Yeah. Yeah. Dogs and stuff. I think I have an umbrella painting with a dog. You can paint anything here. It's mm-hmm. all good. Right. It's just, you know. It's all good, man. To your heart's content. To your heart's content. Now I'm going to give him a little bit of hair, but not too much. I'm just going to blow just enough of that little shape so that it feels like he could have hair. And then when I do the highlight, it'll really, it'll be like, oh, he's got hair. I'll give some, maybe some white hair, and I'll come on the outside. We'll start that. I can even do that on her just a little bit. Mm. Just to imply this. This is loose, you know? It's abstracted. It's not like, oh, how real could I make it? It's not what we did here today. I'm going to take a little of my blue with some white. I'm going to think about my segments that I have here. Kind of get those back in. I don't want to paint them too realistically, but I do want to know that they're there, right? Like if I come right here and I paint in this segment. In that segment. And I can come back with a little bit of white. Come on the outside of the umbrella. And kind of put a little highlight there. And maybe we'll put a little highlight right here. Take it up further into the top of it. So we're starting to talk about segments, aren't we? Mm-hmm. That's always nice. Wonderful, good things to do with our free time. On a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. Doing the stuff. Painting the paint. Painting the painting. I now like I get the- a slightly lighter value and come to the top and... Just shape it out. Your parasol is pretty. Parasol is pretty. It's fun to do parasols, I think. They're sort of entertaining to do, you know, and I for as miserable as it can be to be out in this type of weather, now, it's really fun to paint it. This is not a Prussian No, you could parasol. use Prussian blue on this umbrella, and it would be fine. It would not be harmed. This is a phthalo parasol, which doesn't match nearly as nicely. What? It doesn't rhyme. Oh, Prussian parasol? No. Thalo parasol. Well, I don't know. Prussian parasol is much better than Thalo parasol. I wasn't going to like sit there and give it a value judgment like that, but sure. You know, just. You feel you must. But you're using. I'm getting some just black and kind of refining some of the. That, that black really makes those edges stand out. Just, yeah, refining it a little bit, being thoughtful about it a bit. Making sure it's look at me changing it for like whatever it takes. I'm gonna actually talk to John about somehow mounting a lazy susan to a board for me mm-hmm. so I can do round canvases on the easel. <laughs> like right after the show. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a little bit of my white and blue, I think. And Make probably the lightest color on my umbrella. Just for that outer corner. Maybe a little bit there. Oh, that was fun. I like that. See, so now we've got this little very scallopy thought out umbrella. Don't we like it? I like it. Do you like it? So a little of the black. 
and a lot of yellow, but the black kind of, you know, kind of knocks it back, as you can see. I'm going to wipe the extra pigment out of my brush. Touch of gray until I catch it. So it's just a very warm yellow gray. The first part of the shirt is absolutely in this kind of like darker yellow gray. Pretty wonderful, pretty good. I like to take a little of this maybe and put some here in her hair and some there on his hair. Ooh, it got windy. <laughs> mm. It was so windy. Do you know what it was? Mm. Windy. Who's walking through the streets of the city? Yep, I did it. I am going to take this part of my dark color and come down to that mid knee. I think actually this time I will bring it across a bit. You can always come right there. Sometimes it's nice to put a little bit down on the shirt. Cross on that. Black and blue. Now I'm going to imply where her arm is but i'm going to get it in with just a highlight over that dark value and i think right now it's just important that we blow her skirt aggressively into the wind answer my friend blowing in the wind and i actually thought of something right now i'm going to do to make this even cuter mm. than i originally did it but i have to do it at the end It'll be like a special only for those who watch the video. Oh. Yeah. This is really coming together. Yeah, it's so fun to do. I think our is our next one Love Gnome? Is the Love Gnome next? I'm really excited mm, about the Love Gnome. I don't know. I'll have to go to look. All right. So the front leg on her, we're going to take out a calf and taper it very delicately to the heel. All right. I think it's important to have this be... Somewhat darker. A little bit of those heels happening there. But coming back, the back leg should be slightly more highlighted. I think I want it actually closer to the first leg. So I just erase that. That's what you do when you make a mistake. You erase. Did you know? There we go. You want the legs to be fairly close to each other because they are overlapping. Even though they're just implied, it's still nice to have them be overlapping. Just making these loose little legs. I'm going to get just a little white highlight. Get the calf. Get the heel. Maybe the outside of that heel. So it's just about catching little highlights. And I think that's what, you know, is always surprising when I uh, bring this skirt down to really layer it. And I'm going to arabesque some of these lines, which means I kind of make an S curve. There you go. A little blue and white. Right here on the outside arm. That kind of caught a blue and white on the dress from here. So what we're doing is we're creating a lightened value under the arm dark and 
So where the two people are close together, that should be the darkest. There we go. We've got her kind of shaded in. I need her to dry because I'm going to do a cute thing to make her more stylish. It's going to be so cute. Maybe it's not as cute as I feel it is, but it'll be cute to me. I'm going to make a lighter gray. And then come here. And sort of... The light gray there and this gray right here. And that gives me that, that first basis of those values. I'm just like block shading these. So, yeah, the dark values there. I might move this dark value down a little bit. Let's kind of come down here from under the shirt. And even though that's gray, that's still darker than the other. A little bit of a smidge of a highlight there. Can't be too much though. If it's too light, it won't feel like the second leg. And then a very, very light highlight. Kind of back here. And then there could be one there. Maybe the outside there. So hopefully what you're starting to see is just the shape and movement of the leg without the specificness of the shape of the leg. That's the goal anyways. Getting those kind of worked out. Now, the shirt, bring some white over to this kind of shirt mix that we had earlier, right? Let's top of the arm, cross that over the shoulders. I'm still going to leave it, that dark yellow right there and there. You know, you add stuff. And I think I will pull the shirt down even further, untuck the shirt even more. There we go. That's what I was looking for. See how that's better? Now, one last highlight that's pure white. Kind of on that shoulder, collar, back a bit, mm. even hit. Some of it maybe on the calf here. See if we got enough of a pop there. Yeah, so that's popping him. The fun thing I thought it would be fun to do is to take a little of this neon pink and apply a belt. I didn't have that last time, and I think that that's real cute, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, that it really is. Just a little belt on her. So yeah. she's sort of coordinated to her like she knew where they were going and she made a plan. You know that girl? Mm -hmm. We all know that girl. She's just. I'm not that girl, but I know that girl. They got the little hairband and the purse and the, <laughs> the shoe accessories. And My all daughter Luna Bella is that girl. <laughs> <laughs> she would match herself to a park for sure. <laughs> So I'm going to start to deal with some highlights that I want to talk about a bit and some stuff. I'm going to take a little of my pink and white, I think, and maybe some of my magenta to mute it back. And uh, brush some back and forth here. I'll make sure I've got some of that mixing in a couple places. Let's let's really load up on our opera pink and. Touch some spots that have this hot, hot pink. Drop a few leaves out from there. I think it can be nice to have a few little leaves here. Across this little mm -hmm. bit. For sure. Right? 
or two that have fallen through. Yeah. Hit the umbrella, maybe. Fell behind a couple. Use this to make a bit of a highlight there. And then we need one more value after that. So you're going to take your white and your neon. It's a very light color you're going to make next. Let's put some of these little, sometimes I like to add a little yellow to it. So if I grab a little of my cad yellow, just to orange it up a bit. There we go. Talking about some of these different little fallen leaves. Yeah, I'm just touching that around there. Definitely add some of these. Stiff on top. Oh. Hmm. Amy was like, the heels. They could use a little paint mix too. Oh, yes, they could. We could pink the heel. Pink the heel. Let's pink the heels. Good call, Amy. There we go. Pink on the heels. Mm-hmm. A little neon pink and some white for some little highlighty leaves. These are quite light. I like the heels, you know, maybe the belt a bit. Just work oh, that around. Hmm? That's just come together. It looks it so just nice. Comes together. And the last little thing that you might like is to get some white. And let's add a little bit of a reflection above that. Mm. So everything's just a little wetter on top of that. That's so good. Once you're happy with this fun little painting, and this is the one of the rare cases I will do a bright signature, it's because that's already in the painting. So it won't pull away from the whole composition. Mm -hmm. You know, I try not to do crazy colors that pull the eye, but in this particular case, I think it'll be all right. And you're using uh, what kind of brush? This is a number one monogram liner. Yep. Those monogram liners have really fine points. They do, and I really love them. It's why they're in one of my sets. <laughs> so there we go. That's basically how you would create that. Yeah. How'd you guys do? Really good. This has been a really great chat. We've got over 600 people here, and they just all showed up. They were just loving this. Just Cinnamon doesn't get to see the chat. So I got to tell her what's going I on. I don't really get to see what's going on. I do try to go back and read it. Oh, yeah. You know, when you guys give feedback here, here's what. This is me as a teacher. I love my experience at the easel, so I'm good. So my focus is about your experience at your easel. So I go through those chats and I read your comments because I want to know how you're doing, how you're feeling. If there's something I can do to help you, I go through Instagram that way. I go through Facebook that way. I go through all those things really trying to understand your experience. That's why we... The main Art Sherpa group is actually curated for Art Sherpa tutorials so I can see what you guys are doing and it helps me be a better teacher because my whole goal is to help you paint. I'm already painting. I'm already loving it. I just want to convince you that you might love it too. <laughs> be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.